Hi, I'm Matt Needham, and this is my lecture on electrical components, symbols, and wiring diagrams. Let's start here with the introduction on electrical wiring diagrams. They give you a wealth of information. Um, electrical wiring diagram is kind of like a blueprint. You know, when you have a blueprint, you have different symbols on the, the blueprint. Um, and it directs you as to where things are, and that's kind of how an electrical diagram is. And we have different electrical diagrams to help you see where different electrical components are located and how they interact with each other. And these are represented with symbols that somewhat resemble the actual component. Now, electrical loads. Electrical loads, uh, as we know, are the reason we do everything. Uh, we don't have a transformer for the sake of a transformer. We don't have a light switch or a set of contacts or a generator or a power supply unless we have an electrical load, unless we have something at the end of the line that needs to do some work for us, usually motion, heat, or light. Um, and so these are electrical loads and uh, motors are the biggest electrical loads in the air conditioning and refrigeration industry air conditioning, refrigeration, compressors, even air compressors for pneumatics, uh, all kinds of fans, all kinds of pumps. So it's uh, very important to learn the symbols and how they interact with the controls. We also have solenoids um, that can open and close um, to cause valves to open and close, uh, water valves, refrigerant valves, uh, and we have heaters that certainly we have basic electric strip heat in many cases. Um, again, as we mentioned, the most expensive probably load that we deal with, uh, most complex would be the air conditioning refrigeration compressor, the motor that moves the refrigerant around um, the system. And these are quite expensive usually on larger systems. And then we have fans like the condenser fan that dumps the heat outside and the evaporator fan that helps us absorb the heat from inside either a refrigerated box or inside a building in the case of um, air conditioning. These are some of the symbols for these motors. We have a condenser fan motor, uh, evaporator fan motor, compressor fan motor and sometimes they're just drawn like a circle but then sometimes they're actually drawn with the winding shown like here this compressor has its run and start winding uh, this one does also but it has an overload symbol see how we have a symbol of an overload as a safety device to um, uh, protect the compressor okay now Solenoid coils are quite often used, like this solenoid coil for a, uh, a heat pump, with, it's called the reversing valve, and this is the solenoid coil, and then we energize this, a magnetic field will be created, and we'll shift this inside to allow the refrigerant to flow in one direction or the other. So this is an example of, um, a solenoid coil and I think we're going to see here there's a picture of it and then here's the symbol that represents solenoid coil and this symbol also sometimes is used solenoid as a wire round in, uh, wound into a circle that creates a magnetic field that creates movement for either a solenoid or sometimes a relay or a contactor that we're going to talk about and the coil would be uh, here these two terminals and the coil is actually inside here. Now heaters obviously um, are used, electric heaters are used in many ways. If you just think of a basic little cheap heater that you buy and plug in, maybe it has a little fan. That's a very expensive way to heat, but um, it's a very simple way to heat uh, and it's used quite often. Then we have use other heaters in the air conditioning and refrigeration industry like crankcase heaters to warm the oil of the compressor when the compressor is off, defrost heaters to defrost um, the ice on freezers and so forth. 
And here's just a simple symbol for um, a heater, a squiggly line, uh, as you can see. And let's just draw it a little bigger here so you might be able to see better. So that's how we would draw a heater. And then we just change the words. We might just say CH or CCH for crankcase heater, something like that, or um, DFH for defrost heater. Um, and that's the symbol for a heater. And then lights. Um, we don't really think about lights so much in air conditioning and refrigeration, but we have signal lights. We certainly have a lot of LED lights now on circuit boards that can flash and tell us different things. And the uh, symbol here that we're um, using, sometimes we also just do this to show, and then light for illuminate. Uh, these have letters on them to show you the color of the light. This is a little R for red, green, and blue, but this is a very common um, symbol, electrical symbol for a light to show it, it's illuminated and the L is simply for light. Okay, contactors and relays. Contactors and relays are used to control electrical loads. Here we have a contactor and let me take the uh, cover off so you can see the contacts. This protects the contacts from moisture, dust, suicidal insects also. And here we have the suicidal insects ruin a lot of air conditioning equipment a lot more than people think. So here are the uh, contacts um, and when you energize the coil it pulls in the contacts and then lets the voltage pass through the contacts to uh, the electrical load like a compressor and a condenser fan motor and then usually we control these with a lower voltage uh, usually um, like from the thermostat and we have this low control voltage signal but then the high voltage the high amperage uh, passes through these somewhat heavier duty set of contacts where we wouldn't want to directly pass a high voltage and a high amperage through um, a thermostat that's sitting out on someone's walls with these baby's contacts, we need something a little beefier, a little stronger like our contactor. And then basically the difference between a contactor and a relay is that a contactor is for bigger electrical loads, usually over 15 amps, and relays are for smaller electrical loads, and the contacts are rated in amperage below 15 amps. And here's just a couple of pictures of a, a relay and a contactor. The normal position is how is it normally sitting in the system, usually de-energized, but how it normally sits in the system. And like when this contactor is in the system and it's just sitting there, the contacts are open and they would be drawn normally open. Um, so normally open set of contacts, the symbol for that would be this. So it's open then if you energize the coil of the contactor coil, then the contact closes and sends power uh, like to a compressor of sorts. And here we have that uh, drawn for us. And sometimes the solenoid coil can be drawn like this, this, or this. I mean, there's some standards, but things vary sometimes a little bit, okay? Now this is a mag starter, a motor starter, also sometimes referred to um, more in electrical work as a line starter. And it's nothing more than a contactor that has built-in overload protection for the load that it serves, like a very large fan or a compressor. And that's what this diagram is showing you, is that it, does, it has its three major contacts here um, that controls the load, um, but it also has this here as an overload um, protection. Okay. 
Now switches can be as simple as just a light switch on or off, right? And we think about a light switch being drawn just, you know, the symbol for that is just that, uh, a simple uh, switch, okay? But there are other, it's not just a manual switch that we have. Sometimes we can add something to it like uh, this, which now becomes a switch, which is a, um, a a uh, heating thermostat where it's going to make on a temperature drop closing a set of contacts to bring something on to make the room warmer. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now thermostats as I just draw, uh, drew um, inside this air conditioning thermostat we have uh, a heating thermostat and a cooling thermostat which would draw be drawn below the line so that if the bimetal gets warmer this rises up and closes and then brings on the cooling which normally would like energize a contactor coil and then this would close and then bring on a compressor we also have um, pressure switches uh, that we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, first here again is your heating thermostat and your cooling thermostat and then this is a single pole um, single throw switch. There's only one place in with one place out to go to. Single pole single throw. Power in one spot only with two options to go to. Single pole double throw and then this is double pole single throw and that you have two inputs each only with one output. The throw refers to how many outputs per pole. And so here you see two inputs. So you literally could have like power coming, two inputs, and then each having two options um, to go to, okay? Now here's a pressure switch. This would be a high pressure switch or a high pressure cutout. This is a low pressure switch or low pressure control. And similar to the thermostat, this breaks on a pressure drop. The most common use of this symbol is um, low refrigerant charge. If you have low refrigerant charge, the refrigerant pressure is too low and this would open up and kill the compressor or shut it off um, so that it won't get damaged by running without refrigerant. And then this is your high pressure cutout and this would open up if on a very hot day or uh, and you have a dirty condenser or the condenser fan motor goes bad and the pressure rises it pops open and kills power um, that could feed the compressor or a contactor coil that then controls the compressor with a set of contacts. Let's actually take a, a quick look here at a couple of these um, components. So this is a, a low pressure control and this would screw into the refrigerant line like on the low side of the system on the suction line. And then here's that set of contacts that, I'm sorry, I. There we go. Here's that set of contacts that can make or break um, uh, to protect the um, compressor, okay? And then also you have the high pressure cut out here, and sometimes these pressure switches look like this, and then sometimes they can look like this and directly screw into the pipes, and then the contacts are here uh, inside to make or break the electrical signal on um, the wires. There's a lot to pressure switches and uh, um, they can also be used for fan cycling where when the head pressure gets too high on a warm day we can bring on extra condenser fans for larger systems, things like that. Okay, now safety device is very important. A fuse um, is there to protect the whole circuit and if you get a high amperage way more than you should that fuse is going to burn open to protect 
these um, electrical loads from being burned open themselves, the windings from being burned open. Also, we mentioned earlier thermal overloads and magnetic overloads. And also here's a transformer, and let me show you that. Um, here's a simple transformer, and this would be the primary, and this is the secondary. And the job of the transformer is to change one voltage into another, okay? And we always have transformers all around the city dropping the power down to voltage lower and lower, but in air conditioning, the control voltage that's most common uh, is 24 volts, so we usually drop it down from let's say 115 volts in this case, or 230 volts uh, down to 24 volts. And you see a lot of these type of um, transformers in our industry. And here, again, is a schematic symbol for the transformer. So you might see this in interacting with these other symbols um, on an electrical diagram. And this is the symbol for the transformer. A schematic diagram is also known as a ladder diagram, and it really helps you with sequence of operation. It doesn't show you where each wire terminates, but it shows you which control um, controls what loads. And it's drawn for the um, purpose that it's easy to look at and easy to read so that you can uh, understand how the system works, what controls what, and it helps you to figure out what's wrong with the system. Um, and to do proper wiring. Now pictorial diagrams is a little different. This kind of shows you where the components are located um, in a panel and it also will kind of tell you different wire numbers or colors and where they do actually terminate so that if over here you have wire 51 then you can see the other end is over here on this component wire 51. Then we have, I guess, a factual diagram, um, which is kind of popular nowadays, which consists of a pictorial diagram with a schematic diagram. It's kind of a hybrid thing where they're trying to show you where things are and also sequence of operation. Okay. Installation diagrams. What um, really is special about installation diagrams is uh, whatever you have to do out in the field, uh, those wires are going to be shown as dashed lines um, on the uh, installation diagram. So it's really showing you it's for installers, make your wire terminations here, um, and so forth. And that concludes uh, my lectures, my lecture on components and skimble, uh, symbols uh, and electrical diagrams.